Bisco fam, can I get a year? It's that time again. Another Camp Bisco lineup review. This is going to be the third review on the channel. And I've been to Bisco two years. 2018 when I first started the channel. And 2016 before the channel existed. Am I going this year? I'm not sure. Let's look at this lineup and find out after the intro. Can I get a year? <laughs> Festival Finesse. Hello, everybody. Thank you for tuning back into another lineup review. For those of you guys who are new here and don't know me, I'm the Festival Finesse. This is my channel, a channel that revolves around music festivals and live music going experiences with a focus and concentration on dubstep and rhythm. If you are not following me at a festival day by day, probably follow me at a show in New York City, New Jersey, Philly, anywhere I go, you guys are coming with me. And if you're not following me at a show or festival, you're sitting with me here at this desk, getting life hacks, trick tips, festival reviews, lineup reviews, EDM news, controversial debates, and any other words of advice I can give to you guys to make sure you can have the best festival going experience possible. Today we were talking about Camp Bisco 2020, the lineup. But before we talk about the lineup, I just want to share some experiences with you because I went to Bisco in 2018 and I vlogged that whole experience. And this festival is definitely something that you have to kind of prepare for mentally because you're not going to just get there and park your car at your campsite and, you know, set up camp and go to the festival because there's a whole bunch of shit that happens in between. You got to park your car, walk your stuff to the shuttle. 2 a.m. We are waiting online to get on the shuttle with all of our shit. Let's get, get shuttled to a campground and pick a campground you want and then set up camp. There are no plots. It's just wherever you want to go, just set up camp in the woods. And, you know, that, so that's what I'm talking about. It's not it's not like every other festival you've been to. It's definitely different. It's a little more chaotic, a little more disorganized. But, you know, it's definitely a festival. It definitely, you know, it's been it's been around for a bunch of years. I don't even know how long I've been doing it for. Maybe like 10 years, something like that. I could be wrong, but... It's definitely like a well-known festival on the East Coast. Two hours away from where I live. Well, that's four, but two hours away from where I live. And, um, yeah, that's why I'm so inclined to go because it's so close. It's easy. And it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So I don't have to request off the whole weekend. I can go back to work on Sunday if I need to. And, um, yeah, so I just thought that's very unique. And it is. I saw, I saw a water park. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of dope. The water park. I'm not sure if it's actually open or not. But there's a wave pool you can go into. There's a lazy river. One of the stages is at the wave pool. I'm sure you've seen the 12th Planet video. That's where I found out of rhythm, bro. That whole that whole 2016 12th Planet wave pool set, rhythm for me. That 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 brought me into rhythm. <laughs> crazy everybody in the way pulling shit so let's talk about this lineup now 2020 camp bisco going down july 9th 10th and 11th that's thursday friday saturday on montage mountain in scranton pa and keep in mind this festival literally is on a mountain you're gonna be camping on a mountain so it's always hard to find a good flat camping spot so just keep that in mind you're gonna be kind of sleeping uncomfortably and that's just part of the bisco experience so kicking it off we have six sets of the disco biscuits six sets this is their festival camp bisco disco biscuit makes sense so they're doing six sets over the course of three days which is crazy and then our secondary headliners i guess kind of are bass nectar grizz tipper two sets to tipper times two lotus san holo sts9 subtronics spangle which is simon pos for live backed by the disco biscuits i have no idea what that means and then we get g jones and troy boys so the heavy dubby bassy acts on this lineup are definitely bass nectar and subtronics for sure and then you kind of get g jones and tipper for like that experimental freeform bass and then you get some kind of more softer melodic you know just kind of more happy sounds from troy boy sts9 i don't know too much about lotus or san holo live but we're gonna continue into the next tier of artists where I know a few more, we get AT Aliens, Boogie T, the Boogie Trio. So one thing to know about Bisco, it's, it's a very diverse festival, and it's by the Disco Biscuits. They are not EDM. So they have a lot of, like, jam bands and funk bands, and then they incorporate the EDM. And, you know, again, not a lot of heaviness. They kill, like, Boogie T, AT Aliens, Charles I. These are all artists that are on here, and these are the different kind of vibe that this festival brings. It's not very heavy, but there are a couple of heavy acts on here, like Hesh I See and Bass Nectar, obviously. So let's keep looking, shall we? So then we get Break Science, Charles the First for a very experimental, deep, just feelsy kind of set. Not feelsy like soft, but just kind of like trippy. Like it's very relaxing. It's very cool. I saw my big dub and it was a very cool experience. And then we get Cut Chemist, who I don't know anything about. Charlie 2 and A, Death Pact, East Coast debut. That sounds pretty sick. Death Pact sounds heavy as fuck. Then we get Detox Unit, Doppapod, Elderbrook, 
Hesh, fucking my boy, Burner Posse. Then we get Jansen, who I actually loved his set at uh, Electric Forest. Very just funky and dancey, and it had some like heavy bass. And it was very deep, but it was also fun. And not, it wasn't very experimental. It was very fun and just very, like, bouncy and dancey. Then we get Justin J's Fantastic Voyage. I don't know anything about that. Lucy, who I've been seeing on a lot of lineups recently. Don't know too much about her, but um, I don't even know if she produces. I'm not even sure. But I know she DJs, and she's play, She's part of, like, a very, like, just experimental, deep kind of vibe. Doesn't really strike me as a heavy artist, but I have never can't really remember seeing her to give you an accurate reference then we get medicine member of the trees repping that wakan label definitely more chilled out uh experimental freeform vibes opio perpetual groove sunbird for my house people definitely more chill kind of like tropical house i feel like um spoonbill sun scrubby who i've heard a bunch of things about but don't actually know or you know any i couldn't give you guys any information about i just keep hearing sun scrubby and seeing him on this on you know bisco like lineups and then we get sudden death Holy fuck, he's gonna destroy Can Bisco, dude. I can't even imagine where he's gonna be playing on what stage. I'd love I'd love to see him play on the wave pool stage, but probably not because, you know, excision and bass like to play on like, you know, the other stage that has all the chairs, which is kind of annoying. One of the stages has like a bunch of like it's like seating. Because there's a bunch of chairs built into the ground. So it's cool because you can use them as like a little like to stand on and get a better view. It's got like a big overhang. They project visuals onto the ceiling, which is kind of crazy. And um but yeah, you can't really mosh in that setting because there's chairs everywhere and shit. So you're just kind of stuck either standing on a chair or, you know what I'm saying? I'd want to mosh and get rowdy to sudden death. So I hope they put him on the wave pool stage. That would be, I think, the best idea. But continuing, we have Talk, The New Deal, and Yeti back-to-back -to -back Toadface, which is going to be very experimental, bro. Last year after 12th Planet, Yeti was playing, and everybody flocked from 12th Planet to the office. It's very small stage, and it was fucking swamped, bro, for Yeti. So Yeti back-to-back Toadface, definitely going to be experimental and trippy and walked out so now into our third tier of artists still see some monster here that i know which is good we get blank bomber from my rhythm people um cloud chord cycles domi and jd beck easy bags for that like you know chill you know experimental kind of vibe ethno ilo ilo or elo elo i don't know Jessica Artifred, who I've seen, she actually kills it, and she's actually really heavy, so if you like dubstep, definitely check her out. Um, Kaiva, Late Night Radio, Less Special, Level Up. I wonder, is Level Up going to be playing every festival Subtronics plays? Because he brought her on tour, like, he's just putting her on the map, bro. What did she even do to get there, bro? Like, damn, it's crazy. Then we get Lick, Litz, Maddie O'Neill, Party Pupils, DJ Set. Paz, Random Rab, Sippy, who is repping the female dubstep producer gang. Um, I think she produces. She definitely DJs. I've definitely seen her play with, there's like this whole like female show. It was like Sippy, Zaya, Lays, and um, maybe Lucy. I don't even know, but it was cool. Um, then we get Space Cookie, World Town, Sound System, and Zebler and Conti Experience. And then lastly, we get Zaya repping Grave Dancer. And um, she plays not too much heavy stuff, more kind of like deep vibes but um she's fun she's cool and that wraps up the lineup so would i go to camp bisco this year i'd probably go for hesh boogie t at aliens bass nectar subtronics g jones who else is on here jansen sudden death not bad bro i would go it's close two hours away camping we love camping Bree and i so Definitely a fun festival, definitely a vibey festival, and a festival that's not go hard all day, every day, you know what I'm saying? This festival is very relaxed. You don't have to spend all day camping at the rail. You can go back to your campsite, go into the festival, go into the lazy river, and just chill out till your sets start. Listen to it in the river, bro. It's really chill. Bisco is a really cool festival. I enjoy it because it's not very mainstream. You don't get a lot of chads and brads. It's very, like, grimy, dirty, grungy, and um, I enjoy that festival experience because that's what festivals are all about. Just getting away from the real world and entering our own little realm of and i guess that's my kid wrap up this video because my camera just died and yeah so as i was saying bisco is definitely a good festival especially if you don't like mainstream vibes and you like to camp and all that good stuff so definitely check it out if you like experimental bass and freeform bass if you like dubstep you might not love it but if you're close enough i definitely would check it out because it's a cool festival the water park is cool the lazy river the wave pool the stage is very unique they have projection mapping on the ceiling of one of the stages so it's definitely sick and i've yet to see that so i kind of want to go possibly and you know film it for that experience and just kind of re-up my finessing skills i can't best go you know what i'm saying so Thank you guys for watching. If you guys want to see me at Camp Bisco, let me know in the comments. If you guys have any Bisco experiences or memories, things you want to share, let me know in the comments as well. And um, that's it. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you for the next one.
Peace out. Peace out.